Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. Today I want to run you through the equipment you will need to start float fishing with a rod and reel. Up until now my videos have been made with two methods, the whip and the short pole, both of which are basically a stick with a length of line tied to it. Can't get any simpler than that. But as the season advances, fish will move further away from the bank and sometimes you won't be able to reach them with a short pole or a whip. So you will want to use a rod and reel to cast out with a float on the end. Now I'm going to assume that you have no fishing tackle and are a complete beginner. If you already have some of this gear because you've been fishing, fine. Now, first and foremost, you need a rod. For float fishing, for general float fishing, um, on natural venues, that's lakes, rivers, still waters in general, um, you need to consider something about 13 feet long with a nice action. Now, the rod I'm going to show you is a Drennan. It's the cheapest in Drennan's range. It's a three piece, 13 foot red range float. This is the cheapest in Drennan's uh, float fishing range, but it is a very good rod for the money. Price wise, less than 60 pounds. Um, it has a very refined blank for the money. It has a beautifully soft semi through action. It'll handle real, they, Drennan say, it's rated for real lines from four pounds down to a hook length of about one pound in breaking strain. I have fished it with five pound line through and it worked fine. Uh, but bear in mind, this is a general float fishing rod. It's not meant for catching 15 or 20 pound carp, etc, etc. Nor is it meant for catching barbel from the river Y in flood, etc. Um, the other alternatives you might want to consider if you're going to be a bit more specialised fishing, if you are going to be fishing big lakes, reservoirs, fast flowing rivers, the Severn, the Trent, the Y, you would want to consider a 13 or 14 foot what is known as a power float. Uh, much stronger, uh, more capable of landing bigger fish but not so good for just general float fishing. At the other end of the scale there are rods that are used for ultralight waggler fishing on places like small still waters, canals, small streams. Uh, they're generally shorter, about 11 feet long, and are generally even softer to enable them to be used with thinner lines and smaller hooks. But for general float fishing, a 13 foot three piece rod is what you want. Now I've recommended Drennan because I've had the rod for a while, I've tested it, I know what it does, it's very good value for money. Um, you can buy cheaper float rods, there's no two ways about it, but they, the ones I have fished with and had a little waggle with on the bank and watched other people, they don't have such a good refined action. Um, they're generally a bit more clumsy. However, if you, that is what your budget allows, then um, that I guess is what you will have to buy. Um, so moving on from that, what else do we need? We need a reel, obviously. Here I have a small, what is known as a 3,000 sized fixed ball reel. Matches with this kind of rod perfectly, has clip on and off spools, a rear drag or clutch to enable fish to take line if it runs off to save your line breaking, you tighten it up to make it harder, obviously. This particular one is a Drennan. I think they're about 37 pounds. They come with a couple of spare spools and they have a couple of features why I would recommend these reels above some others. They have a shallow spool. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in the camera to give you a look at this. Each spool takes exactly 100 metres of line and as line mostly comes on 100 meter spools that is what you want. The Probably the most important feature for a float fishing reel is a shallow spool. Drennan comes with three of them to take three different diameters. I have one with three pounds, one with six and one with five. Six pound line is about the limit for float fishing and that you would use on commercials. So going back to these, the most important feature is not front or rear drag, the amount of bearings it has, but a shallow spool to give you good line lay. There are other makes, obviously. Um, if you're really on a tight budget, Drennan do um, a virtually identical reel called a Red Range. They retail for, I've seen them on eBay for just over 20 pounds to the high 20s there almost identical to this they uh, and they will do a good job but because they're a slightly cheaper reel don't expect them to last 30 or 40 years because they won't for 20 odd pounds at the other end of the extreme you can buy a top of the range Daiwa, Shimano etc for a couple of hundred pounds and they're undoubtedly very good quality reels but what you want as a beginner is a shallow spool. It is the most important thing. Don't worry about front or rear drag, both are good. So, moving on from that, we have a rod and a reel. The next thing you need to consider is line. Now, there are hundreds of different lines on the market. Um, some are better than others. Some have different properties. For float fishing, I like two lines. They have different properties. This one here is Drennan float fish. It's a dedicated float fish line. This is the newer version of a line that's been around for ages. Um, it's, this one is 4.4 pounds and 0.18 in diameter. So it's a little bit thicker than some lines, but it's robust and you can pinch weights on the line without damaging it so much and it's quite a robust line. It also floats, um, you can sink it, but it's basic is a, a hard floating line. Sometimes obviously you will need to encourage it to float by smearing it with something like, um, I favour Mr Sheen or anything like that or you can buy dedicated uh, line floater. The other one that I tend to use is Drennan Suplex, which is a, a higher quality line with a correspondingly higher price. Um, very, very good line. I would say this is probably one of the top real lines on the market, but there are loads of different ones. If you ask a hundred anglers, you'll get probably 50 different opinions as to what's the best line. Some people are diehard Maxima users, Others prefer Bayer, Perlon, some people prefer Preston line. But I have found nothing wrong with these and I've tried most real lines on the market and these do the job very well. Right, moving on. Oh yes, one final touch uh, to mention, braking strains. If you are fishing on a canal for small fish with fine lines, you would probably be talking about a two and a half pound braking strain line between 0.12 and 0.14 in diameter. Average float fishing, general float fishing, three or four pounds is good. If you're fishing commercial fisheries, which are a different ball game, you might want to switch up to as high as six pounds and occasionally even higher. But there you are, tend to be fishing for large quantities of carp barbel and general big fish that fight very hard but for general float fishing i would say a three to four pound reel line is all you need so moving on the next part floats floats come in thousands and thousands of different shapes colors and sizes they can go from ones like some of these
which are very large loaded peacock slider floats. They have quite a considerable weight in the base of the float and they can be cast an awful long way. Quite a specialised bit of equipment though. And then they can go down to the other end of the extreme. To floats like this. Dinky little wagglers for use on drains, canals, etc. So there's a wide variation, but <coughs> you need to remember with floats, they basically break down into two types. Floats for running water are normally referred to as top and bottom or double rubber because they are fastened at both the top of the float here with the rubber possibly another one halfway down and one at the bottom so top and bottom then you have another class of floats called wagglers now a waggler is fished bottom end only so a line either goes through the bottom of the float or through an attachment and they're called wagglers because when you reel them in, they waggle and hang from the line. When you cast them out in the water, they turn over and sit as normal. That's the two main things to remember. Generally, I would say wagglers for still water and occasionally for longer range fishing on rivers where you're having to cast a bit further out and top and bottom for running water. So let's cover them the two types, running water first. Now I think you can break running water down, floats down into four types. Firstly, the lightest and probably the best known is the stick float. Attached top, top and bottom, this one has a thin top and an aluminium stem, but they can come with fat dome tops, wooden stems, plastic stems, all sorts. Basically, close range uh, work on a river. The next type is what is known as a double balsa. It's an all balsa float, though this particular design, a Drenum one, has a strengthening piece of plastic in the bottom. There would be used where you need slightly more weight there and where they need to maybe a slightly deeper, faster swim. Stepping up from that, you would go to an Avon float. Now an Avon float is, carries a lot more weight, um, has a thick top and a body on it. They're generally used in deeper, faster waters and they have a thick top so they don't get dragged under. They can support big baits and you can see them from a fair distance away, 30 or 40 yards away. And lastly, a quite a specialised running water float called a loafer. Um, these are used to support sometimes big baits in shallow water or smaller baits in shallow fast water. They have a thick top so they don't get dragged under in the current. They tend to be used on quite shallow swims because they're quite a short stubby float. Very, very useful these are in certain circumstances. They're not a float that I use a lot because I don't fish many waters that uh, I need them, but I've always got a couple. So that's basically running water floats covered. Now, Wagler floats. These are floats, as I said, attached bottom end only, come in a multitude of designs and a multitude of materials. Basically two designs, either what they call a straight waggler where it's an even diameter from top to bottom or what is known as an insert waggler with a slimmer tip in it to detect bites when they're shy and just generally more sensitive. They come in two types, basically loaded where they have a loading in the bottom of them or an unloaded. Um, the floats I would recommend above all others are Drennan. These floats 
are what are called crystal wagglers. Uh, they are made out of clear plastic or slightly tinted. They have been around for a great many years and they are really robust. They are readily available anywhere. They come in a multitude of sizes, um, enough to cover anything. And Drenum floats are so well engineered that they have, some other people had them, but Drenum floats have had this for years, interchangeable tips. So this one, for instance, has an orange tip. I can pull it out. I can take any other Drenum float with an insert and swap the color. A red one. Just to make it even better, Drenum also sell packets of different coloured tops so you can go down your local turkey shop and buy these you can have tops with thick bulbous tops black tops yellow tops red tops thin tops long tops everything uh, Peter Drenham said they're like a Lego float and he's right you can build your own float out of them they're all virtually all interchangeable they're made out of a pretty tough plastic. It's not indestructible. I mean, if you stamp on them or snap them in half, they'll break the same as any other. But these are what I would recommend. On an aside, Drennan also make traditional floats out of traditional materials, natural man-made ones. This is a, a pe uh, this is a combination. This is made out of a peacock quill base with a plastic interchangeable insert but they do you can buy floats made out of all peacock and in a few instances you can buy specialized floats made from uh, crow quill and elder pith that are known as toppers very specialized i think i think for beginners stick to the drennan crystal wagglers you probably need about five or six floats in two or three different sizes from about one and a half grams up to maybe four grams. I have thousands of floats as, well, not thousands, but hundreds, as do most fishermen like me who've been fishing for a long time. So let's put the floats away. One last point, keep your floats in float tubes. They're not cheap, they start at about £1.50. If you keep them in a float tube, I've got floats that I've had for 30 years. Always worth looking after your tackle unless you're really rich and lazy. Right, to attach a waggler float to your line, you need these. Let's zoom in so you can see them. They are lengths of silicone tubing with a swivel on the bottom. Most manufacturers do them. I've just got Drennan ones. Most of my tackles Drennan. I'm loyal to them and I like their gear. It's good gear. Um, also, in conjunction with them, you can also use what are called float stops or the slightly larger gripper stops. You slide these on the line and trap the float in between them and they are used generally with loaded floats so you don't have to pinch big shots on the line. Very useful. But I will go into all this on another video when I show you exactly how to set them up. For top and bottom floats, you need some silicone rubber. This I find is the most economical way to buy them. Let different diameters, different colors in a pack. Just cut off the length you need. Uh, but they are essential for top and bottom floats. The next item you need to think about is weights. Now, weights for are called split shots because they're basically like a shotgun pellet with a split in them for those who don't know sorry about this if you're not a complete beginner you know all this 
you need to be fussy with shot. They need to be soft. Now, since the lead ban of many years ago, rightly or wrongly, we're stuck with it, shots are now made out of uh, a kind of tin alloy. The most reliable I have found are a brand called Anchor. This is a multi-pack dispenser, uh, about five or six pounds, has shot from SSG, which are the largest, which incidentally, if you're wondering, it's a shotgun thing, they stand for swan, stag and goose. Uh, treble A's, BB's, ones, fours, and sixes. Those are the the largest shot. Uh, these shot are the ones that have to be made out of an untoxic material. Smaller than this, they can be made of lead. So that's eights, nines, tens, eleven, twelves, and thirteens. But basically, if you get one of these plus a pack of smaller shot, you're on your way. For smaller shot, I use these stots. Put on the line with a pair of style pincers or a small pair of pliers. I don't use my teeth, so other anglers will. The, the reason for these is they are line friendly and float fishing lines are quite fine. Uh, they were invented for carp fishing because you can put a small shot on a thick line, but they've turned out to be a very useful and in small sizes I use nothing else now. Um, last note on shot, you can buy them in small packs as well, refills. So if you don't want to buy a big dispenser and just want a few sizes, there you go. For beginners, ready tied hooks all the way. There are loads of different varieties, patterns, sizes and shapes. Um, I would always recommend ready tied hooks for beginners. They're available in a multitude of patterns. And sizes, and here's just a few that I would recommend. These are mostly smaller hooks for small baits. So I had them in barbed from 22, 20, 18, and 16. I have them in 16 and 18, 20s, um, in stronger ones, and some slightly bigger ones, 14s and 12s, for maybe when I want to use a bigger bait like sweet corn for example you need to uh, match your hook size to your bait so acquire some that match generally i would say for maggots you would mount them on anything between a 16 possibly a 14 and a 22. Uh, baits like sweet corn worms can be mounted on anything from a 12 to possibly a 16. Um, Small bits of meat can be mounted on a slight, you know, a 12 or a 14 as well. Uh, but basically you only need half a dozen patterns and that should cover you for just about all your float fishing requirements. Now, if you're a nun fisherman and never been fishing before and you're going float fishing, float fishing is generally carried out at longer ranges. Sometimes you can throw the bait to where you want to reach it other times you will need one of these. When I was a kid, every schoolboy had one of these, a catapult. Nowadays, very sophisticated, beautifully made. Simply put, load the bait in the end, pull the tag, aim at your weight gain, fire. Um, they come in loads of different sizes, colors, strengths, etc and designs. I personally stick to Drennan. I like the design but there are plenty of alternatives. Um, choose what you want. Next thing, a landing net obviously and a handle which hopefully you're going to catch a big enough fish. Try, this is just a cheap one, um, try and pick one with a landing net handle at least six feet long or two meters and preferably three but it's what you can afford. At least one bank stick is going to be useful. Here's a bank stick. This one I love. It's a quorum design and it has a couple of important features.
On the end, it has a screw thread. Ultra important for getting your bank sticks into hard ground. Up here, it has what is known as a cam lock. Lift the lever up, slide it, the inner bit in and out. And at the top, I have a screw in uh, multi position rod rest. Um, the advice I would give you with a bank stick is buy a good quality one. The difference between a good one and a bad one is not very much. The difference being is a bad one, you won't get it in the ground, it'll bend, it'll break, you'll throw it away, you won't be able to hold, you know. It's false economy, basically. For certain kinds of float fishing, you might want to have the rod held in two rests, in which case I've got a back rest again with a screw on the end of it, cam lock again, it's removable in a nice sturdy screw point, and this one's fitted with what's known as a butt rest because your rod butt fits in it. Here I want to show you an older type bank stick. Now at first glance it looks quite a good bank stick. I've had it a few years. It's quite sturdy but it has one problem. Although it has a good point on it, when the ground's hard you can't get it in. Now I've seen anglers with hammers hammering them in and I find that really annoying. There's no need to do that. One, it frightens all the fish away and two, it really annoys other anglers. It's totally unnecessary. Don't buy plain rod vests. Buy them with screwing points. And that's just about it. You would obviously need bait box and some small items small items you need a disgorger essential this is just a cheap plastic design loads available a pair of scissors dirt cheap get them for a pound or less a very useful little tool called a loop tire when you're float fishing is really, if you're using pre-tied hooks, the only knot you need to do is uh, to tie a loop in the end of your main line to attach your hook length. One of these makes the job really simple. If you look up in our other videos, two essential knots, you'll see how to use this. Um, I have my style pliers to put small shot on. And that is just about, and that is just about everything you'll need. Now, down to the nitty gritty, how much does it all gonna cost? <coughs> right, we'll assume you don't have unlimited funds. General float fishing rod, Drennan Red Range. Drennan reel to match. About 85 pounds. Maybe a few pence more, maybe a few pence less, depending where you buy. Plenty of money, no problem. Go and buy something like a Drennan Acolyte or a Daiwa Tournament. You will get probably some of the best rods in the world, beautifully made, the same as world champions use, class bits of kit. But you don't need them to catch fish. My whole point I've laboured for my videos is how to catch a lot of fish easily without spending a lot of money. And here's the other point. If you buy a rod like this, Although this is considered a cheaper rod these days at sub 60 pounds, it's a very good rod and will last you for years and years and years. In fact, if you don't break it, there's no reason why you couldn't be using this in 30 years time. They're that good. Quality nowadays is much better than it used to be. Um, people are much more buyer conscious, they're aware of their power and they will vote with their wallets. Uh, the rest of the bits and pieces. The floats, I think they're about, adrenaline floats about 150 or 175 each. So you need half a dozen of them if you're going to fish wagglers, probably the same for running water. Um, a landing net, well, if you shop around and hunt around, you can buy a cheap-ish landing net and handle for about 15 pounds, I would say. Uh, rod rests about a fiver heads pound or so, couple of pounds. Uh, the real lines, they vary on what brand and what type you buy. Suplex, which is one of the uh, best lines on the market, it's about a fiver. The other ones are a little bit cheaper. They are just under four pounds. Um, 
And there you are. You're all set to go. Um, once you've mastered float fishing, you can have an awful lot of fun, catch an awful lot of fish. And it's a traditional way to catch fishes with a rod, reel and line. Um, most people, when they think of fishermen, think of a fisherman with a float. So, anyway, I will be doing videos using all this gear. I'll be doing a couple of videos showing you exactly how to set up your gear. From winding line on your spool, to putting a float on your line, to putting shot on your line, hooks, etc. How? Oh, that's a point I didn't mention. Plumbing the depth, I forgot to mention. Probably uh, the most vital bit of angling equipment of them all, a plummet. You can get away with just a cheap, non-toxic weight plummet like this. Go for one about an ounce. Nearly forgot the most important bit of all there. So um, I will be doing further videos, like I said, to show you how to do this all. And I look forward to you joining me there on the bank side and we'll have some fun, hopefully, catching some good fish. Again, hopefully, but uh, that's in the future and it won't be long. So until then, goodbye from Easy Fishing. Catch you all later.